So this is the blower motor module, the controller. It uses pulse width modulation to control your uh, fan for the air conditioning and the heat. And as you can see, uh, the terminals, well, it might not pick up, but they're a little bit toasty down in there. They definitely melt a little bit. <laughs> kind of weird. Um, gone through about five connectors on this one here. You just keep popping it because it'll melt that terminal block inside the vehicle for the connector body. And replace the pins, and I'll put all the part numbers up later. So can we do anything about this? Clearly, there's a defective design where you get a lot of uh, humidity, condensation builds up, gets down into electronics, eventually gets down into the connections, and of course, as everyone knows, your blower intermittently works, which is typically when it's uh, you know freezing cold out or it's 115 degrees out and you're sitting in traffic and you're burning hot, sweating. So let's see what we can do about this one and deep dive it more. All right, just a couple tabs, one there, one there, and on the other side, so let's pull this guy open. Perfect. Now let's take a first glance here. So there's a, if you can see, it's kind of hard to see, there's a conformal coat that's sprayed over all the electronics you can especially see by these pins. So what that is, is to keep any type of water, moisture, you can even see the glare, especially down in the light down here. It's got a weird, like, waxy look. That's to protect all the electronics from condensation and water. But um, the terminals, they obviously, the tin and stuff on there, those coatings don't get any of that because you need to conduct through. And then, of course, everyone knows that a lot of those metals there don't last forever when they're in uh, exposed to moisture or corrosive environments. So as you can see... We got some uh, interesting things going on here with this circuit board. Getting a little toasty for sure. Got some, uh, you know, some black spots. Magic started getting out. All that magical smoke. Let's see what else. That's about it. So what I'm gonna have to do is clean some of that up. Hopefully enough of these things, um, you know. They, some people had their car start on fire or something because of this problem. Or maybe uh, NHTSA does something because not being able to run your front defrost would be a violation. So I'm going to, yeah, the solder got displaced because of the heat. Clean this board up because uh, the intermittent operation, I'm simply going to blame it on the connector body melting inside the vehicle. And then on the bottom, you can see there's an N-channel MOSFET, and this big aluminum piece of uh, chunk is the heat sink, and you can see there's a screw that holds that MOSFET down. So the MOSFET seems to be working. It's probably about a $1 part. And then I'm going to clean up some of this stuff and show you how to make it work again. First, sandpaper, brass brush, get the pins scraped off nice and clean. Next is, we're going to put a very, very thin coat of um, solder onto terminals. And what that's going to do, it's going to help protect the uh, metal on the terminals. And it's also going to make the terminals physically just a tiny bit thicker. And that tiny bit thicker is going to increase the contact pressure on the female side. The increased contact pressure of the thicker metal going in is going to keep the resistance down lower in that mating connection. I tin the terminals after I clean all the oxidation off is I get them hot and then I solder across the pin to get solder on there. Then I put a desoldering wick over the pin, put my heat on top of it and I drag it back and forth like a scrubby pad. And then you just go like that. And when it'll take all the excess off the tip of the pin and it'll also wick excess up in here, leaving you with a nice thin coating so that you can slide the pin back into the housing because I have nowhere to know where I'm going to get these pins. So this way I'm able to still fit through the tiny alignment slots that are in that housing that are pretty precise. And I have pins now that have a nice fresh material coating on the top so I don't have corrosion going on my new female terminals in the vehicle. So that's how I get away with trying to recondition pins. I have no idea where I'm going to find. So as you can see, I got the pins. Terminals are kind of lined up. 
Press them in. They're starting to come through almost in place. The tab's locked in. Both sides. So this guy should be good to go. Once again, this was an intermittent. Sometimes they'll just completely stop, but usually they're rebuildable. It's mainly because this terminal, the connector melted that goes in here. So now we're in the vehicle, and as you can see, we're in the footwell. Let's take a look at the connector. And things get a little toasty, especially in those three wires on the right. If I had to make a wild guess, I would say that there is a lot of power going through three connections that are really close together. And the heat that's generated at the terminals causes a D-rate on the connector's capacity for current. And because they're so close together, you start to get some melting. Hmm. Surprisingly, I don't see more cars like this on a fire somewhere. So let's take a look inside because if you got excess heat, what happens is you see the pins. They start to relax. So let's take a look. If I can get the light right. There we go. You can see going from the right, uh, pin 2 and 3 in. See how the gap opens up? The uh, If you want to call it the spring that presses against the male terminal, the heat causes it to start to relax. So as it starts to relax, the metal doesn't press as hard, giving you higher contact resistance, more heat generation, and then it's just a snowball effect until your connector melts. And also your pins can melt out of the boards too. You can see on the signal pins all the way in that far left corner, that guy, he's fine, he's happy, so he's got to be a thin wire. Oh, he's, uh... oh, okay, so he's spaced away from the other high current ones. Then the signal one there, he's he's the best of all of them. So this one, second from the left, you'll see he's hard to see on camera, but he's definitely sprung up there the highest. So if you jam all, so that even proves it more. If you jam all three high currents all in a row packed next to each other in this connector, it's all tight. It's too tight. You don't get the power generation. These things get too hot. If you keep the higher current one farther away from the bunch, he gets more heat dissipation, and that's why he's all right. And then, of course, the signal wire is all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut this whole thing off. Um, this one, this connector is trashed. I think it's like 18 bucks to get one on uh, some car website, but I'm just too cheap. So I'm going to go through all the parts to make one of these connectors and tap it onto your factory harness so it looks pretty OE. Alright, let's take a look here. So that looks like the uh, connector inside the vehicle. Yep. That looks like it. So, we have the print now. The hardest part is trying to find a picture of this thing on the internet and locating uh, who made it and where they got it. So when you want to order it, there's your part number at the bottom corner for the body. And then uh, you can't read that little gibberish in fine print, but that's effectively what it says. The connector, looking at a secondary lock, which is a little plastic tab. And then the pins, one part number got superseded by another part number. So the lower part number is the correct one if you want the female cavities. So let's take a look here what these pure parts look like. As you can see, I've uh, been replacing these for quite some time now, so let's look at the parts. This is the piece that goes into the back of it. All it does is it holds the pins inside the connector, so they call this the secondary lock right there. And the secondary lock, uh, when you look up that part number, is roughly 64 cents. Then, of course, we got the body shell connector. So that's this part number down here. Secondary lock there. And then we've got the terminals, the female cavities. So if we look at the connector, we're about $1. So buy a bunch, connector is going to keep overheating on you. The only way to really get around this problem 
So drill a hole into the side of the module, solder a wire straight to it, run it around, tap it into the harness, tee it in, solder it onto the vehicle harness. So this way these high power current connectors or the connections, these terminals, aren't actually being used in the connector. All you're doing is providing the signal wire through the connector and then the power. But I'm gonna make it look more like factory because I'd rather have some other mechanic run around trying to figure out in the future after I get rid of the vehicle, how am I gonna fix this problem and let him replace the connector and not you know, put a true fix in. So this way you can just keep swapping out those $100 uh, modules from wherever you're gonna buy them. And they'll just keep melting. Same thing with the connector. You can get these connectors with a pigtail for about 18 bucks on the internet and let everyone keep running in circles. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take that screwdriver you never thought you would ever use. It's pretty useless. We're going to get the assembly lock out. So usually it's just a little burn down the tips plastic for some reason here doesn't get hot enough to start your vehicle on fire it's unfortunate because if your vehicle would start on fire and this was a hazard the dealership would be the one that has to fix this and not you so let's see what else we got going on in here can we get some wires out so they are locked in even without the TPA so that is a secondary lock uh, typically if you look on the bottom there's usually an opening somewhere in the cavities you uh, stick a little pin, paper clip, extend it out and jam it in the bottom and it should unlock it, it should release it. So I'll be right back after I get one uh, paper clip or something. And the nice thing about this connector in the back, it's so large, I should be able to get a full flat screwdriver down up in there. Get the pin loose or unlocked. Oh. More than likely you're going to run into problems getting these uh, connectors and terminals out. You can see how nice and toasty everything gets in there. And what happens is the inside of the connector melts. You can even see there's a little dab missing here. Everything inside distorts and the locks on the bottom of the terminals get caught up in the melted plastic. So you're going to have to push really hard because this connector by, as you can see, this hole is melted. Fortunately not enough to you know, catch the vehicle on fire and make the dealership have to fix these things. But if you have to really jam that thing in there and you'll feel it break, you gotta wiggle it around because it is toasty in there. Eventually you can get it out. Let's see if it cracks loose. And it should, a pair of pliers should be able to pull onto the back of this thing. It should crack loose. Yep. At least wiggle it back and forth. Go back in and see if you can get that pin lock up because this connector, with how melted it is, is not going to give it up. There we go. It's coming out. There we go. There we go. See? Look at even the plastic of the connector is stuck all over that terminal. There's really yeah, good luck getting that out. So I got a few more to go, and I'm gonna cut these off, show you how to use my uh, cheap crimp tool, and we'll be right back. So as you can see, inside a connector, you can tell where a lot of the power was. It's all melted inside there. So it's gonna be really hard to get those terminal locks undone to pull the wires out the back. And the nice thing is it, it melted the plastic so much that it turns to a brittle carbon. And you can just actually sometimes just yank on the wires and they pull right out because that's no longer good plastic. So, it's not the first time we're going to have to do it on the car. It won't be the last time if you redo the connection system that they have in there. Alright, so these got these cheap little crimp tools. You can find them pretty much anywhere. I think Harbor Freight has them. But there's a little, like, heart shape you can see there. So you can get that double crimp. Pretty common ones, nothing special on these. So we'll just take one of these wires here, a little bit off 
tap. And then what you want to do is clean up that copper with a little sandpaper. Just pinch it. Get any surface oxidation off of it because it doesn't look very shiny. Perfect. I like to take those little terminals. Tuck everything in. Perfect. I like to pre-pinch those at the top just a tad bit. The needle nose to close it in makes it easier to crimp. Take our little crimp tool here. And just go, oh man. Pinch that guy some more. It stays on. This guy and go eeny meeny miny mo maybe this guy here. Let me see. Let's try this one. Eeny meeny miny mo. So he seems to have crimped a little nice there. Let's try that again. Eeny meeny miny mo you. Crimp that guy tight. No copper. Awesome. Go back, crimp the bigger one again. Give it some extra pressure. Okay, a strain relief. You got a nice looking factory crimp there. And then I'm gonna go back over and put some solder there because you always wanna solder everything. When you design these harnesses, you gotta pay a premium for that. So while you're doing it yourself, make do it the right way. So as you can see here, on these, I soldered them after I crimped them. In the automotive world, that's called a high dollar harness. That's why they only do crimping. We'd like to do solder, but it just cost way too much money to have each one of these individual terminals soldered. Alright, we're going to put these back in. And the other thing about the solder terminals is a lot of times you might see them only on like ground connections under hood or something. So let's, uh, let's just start grabbing wires here. Let's just go like eeny, meeny, maybe, come on, let's put it here. Mo, I don't guess you. I'm going to stick it. In. And there it clicks in. Grab this guy. Uh, probably put it. Yeah, let's put it here. Okay, I guess more you go there. And just push him down in. Clicks. And then I'll take this guy. Put you in, put you in there. And then we'll take this guy. I'll just stick you in there. You always want to get all the way in there so it goes click like that. Fortunately, this harness is long enough that uh, you can rebuild it so many times after it melts on you again and again and again because no one cares. And then you can stick your little plastic lock in here. Just kind of wiggle around and jab him down. Should fit right about there. Like so. It goes and you just press that all the way down. Then we can plug it all back together. Okay, so uh, I gotta finish putting that. I had to go out and grab my keys. So now we need to put this gray guy all the way back down. Locks in. Uh, hopefully, I got these colors right. I'm pretty sure, but we'll find out. So then I take this guy, plug it into our bore module. So, yeah, cool. Well, let's find out if everything works. So the reason why the fan didn't work was because 
uh, but I didn't know. I left the key in for one, so it had power, which I tend to do things like that. I didn't have 12 volts here to ground, so what happened was the 10 and 20 amp fuse over there, it was uh, no 12 volts on either side, so that tells me the droid I'm looking for is probably in another panel under the hood. And when you come under the hood, it was this 30 amp maxi fuse right here. This guy was blown. So, popped a new one in. Good to go. Fan does work now. And that is what you basically have to do is uh, routine maintenance. You kind of schedule your uh, oil changes when you got that nice fancy HVAC there. You can set your temperature on these Malibus. As you can hear, the fan is working now. You've got to do this probably every two to three years because that's about all that connector down there can take before it melts. Bye.